Hello everyone, there's a lot of tutorials for beginners on my YouTube channel, but I've just realized that I've never created a video that will be a proper step-by-step -step guide to color grading. So today I want to show you the basics of color grading in DaVinci Resolve and I will show you some most commonly used tools you should know of. I hope this video will be helpful. Let's start. And the first thing you need to focus on is color management. Color management is not an easy topic and I'll create a separate video explaining it. But today I will show you the basic color management settings that will work for most camera formats. As, as you hopefully know, different cameras film in different formats. We usually work with log footage or raw footage. So before correcting it, we need to convert it to the color space of our display, which is Rec. 709, to bring back the right contrast and depth to our clips. So here on my timeline, I have a few clips. The first one has been shot with red camera in RAW, and the rest of my clips have been shot in different log formats, but they're all converted to ProRes. This is quite relevant information and you'll find out why in a second. And to set up our color management, we need to go to the project settings over here. Then make sure that you have your color management tab selected. And here our color science as a default will be set to DaVinci YRGB, which is a non-color managed environment. So let's change it to DaVinci YRGB color managed. And then we have the automatic color management selected and we will leave it as it is as this is a tutorial for beginners, so I want to keep it as simple as possible. Then we have a color processing mode, and we have two options here, SDR or HDR. So we use SDR when the majority of our footage on the timeline is SDR, and we use HDR when the majority of our footage is HDR. I will change it to HDR then. And then lastly, we have the output color space, which is set to SDR Rec. 709, and this is a standard color space for most monitors. And now, before we hit save, have a look at the very first clip that's in my viewer and have a look what's happening there after I hit the save button. You see, this clip has been automatically converted to Rec. 709 as it's in the raw format. So basically, DaVinci Resolve had no problems in recognizing it. But now let's have a look at our other clips. When we click on the thumbnails one by one, we can see that they still look washed out. They haven't been converted properly. And this is because they've been transcoded to ProRes and DaVinci Resolve had problems with determining the right input color space. So in this case, we have to do it manually. And it's a very easy process, assuming that you know how your clips were shot. So let's start from this clip of the horse. And when we work in DaVinci Resolve YRGB color managed environment, when we right click on the thumbnail of our clip, there's a new option here that says input color space. And then we have loads of options to choose from. So I know that this clip was shot with Sony camera in S-Log2. Then this clip was shot with Ari in Log C. Then this one, it was Blackmagic Design 4.K Film Gen 3. And this one was shot with red in Red Lock Film. So now all of our clips are converted and ready for color correction. And once your color space is set up correctly, you should move on to the primary color correction, which is adjusting the exposure and the balance. Let's start from the exposure then. And I will show you a few ways of doing this. As in DaVinci Resolve, like in any other software, usually there's a few techniques on how to achieve a certain result. So I will show you a few and you'll be able to choose from them. And also, in case you don't know it, in DaVinci Resolve, we have a few different types of nodes. And I was talking about how to use them multiple times on my channel. So feel free to explore my other videos. But for beginners, it's more than enough to work using the basic node type that's called a serial node. And we create serial nodes by hitting Option or Alt S. And basically always think of a serial node as a layer. So you can create as many nodes as you need. 
and now we can also label our notes so i'll call my first serial note exposure and also what's very important we always use scopes as a guide and for this one i will change parade to waveform and if you want to learn more about scopes have a look at one of my previous videos that i will tag now in the upper right corner so the most important thing to know now is that the waveform represents our clip from the left to the right and to be more precise it represents the luminance so the brightest parts at the top and the darkest parts at the bottom we should usually try to keep our waveform above zero and below 1023 as we don't want the black and white levels to be clipped so let's improve the exposure using the white curve and usually we do it by creating a characteristic s shape as by doing this we push shadows down and highlights up and this is how we add more contrast to the clip and then in this case i can also create a new point on the curve in the middle to increase the brightness in the midtones and this is before and after alternatively we can use the primary wheels to do the same thing and this is actually my preferred way of adjusting the contrast so we'll be using the master wheels at the bottom and first we have the offset and the offset impacts entire image uniformly so it means that we can brighten or darken the whole clip like this then we have gain that we can use to brighten or darken the clip in the highlights then we have gamma that we use to do the same but in the midtones and by using the lift we do the same but in the shadows so it's all about going back and forth and monitoring the scopes until we are satisfied with the result. Now let's move to the next step when performing the primary color correction, which is adjusting the balance. As it happens very often that the clip is too warm or too cold. So let's use this Ari clip to demonstrate it. And now we'll also change the waveform to parade as parade helps to show clearly all three color channels red green and blue and it shows if they are balanced or not and here we can clearly see that we have too much red in the highlights and the clip is quite warm so let's fix it and again i will label my note first i always do it to avoid any confusion and there's also a few ways of adjusting the balance let's start from using the auto white balance tool i don't usually do it but it can work for you if you like quick fixes so let's grab it and the only thing we have to do is to select an object that is supposed to be white so in my case it's a shirt over here so i'll zoom in and i'll select it and now let's zoom out and this is before and after and also look at the scopes before and after and another way of adjusting the balance is using the temp and tint sliders so my clip is too warm so i will push my temp slider to the left and then my tint slider attach as well and again before and after and let's reset it and now we can also use our primary wheels to do it and as we have identified before there's too much red mostly in the highlights so i will just push my gain towards blue a bit which is the opposite direction to red like this and again before and after and let's reset it and we can also use the color bars down here and color bars operate in the exactly same principle as primary wheels and here again we'll just take out a little bit of red from the gain like this and then maybe a bit of green and now our shot is balanced so now let's move to the secondary color correction that involves a bit more advanced tools and we perform it once our clips have properly adjusted balance and exposure and i will show you how to use it on this clip of the horse i've already adjusted the balance and the exposure here but actually in my opinion the clip still looks too warm and too vibrant and i want it to look more subtle so let's first create a note and let's call it look and here i will use my gamma and gain wheels to create a bit colder look 
so I will push my mid-tones towards blue first, a very small movement, then my highlights, and this is before and after. And I think that this clip already looks more elegant, but now I want to take a bit of that vibrancy from the sky, as it looks oversaturated to me. And this is where we'll be using the qualifier tool. So let's create a new node and let's label it as sky. And now we just have to grab the qualifier from here. And now we can select the sky color from the clip in the viewer. And now to be able to see the selection, we can turn the highlight mode on up here. And let's scroll through the clip to see the selection. And I can see it's not perfect as there's a portion of the sky here that hasn't been selected. So in order to improve our selection, we can grab the picker add from here that will allow us to add more blue tones to our selection. So let's select more sky now, like this. And let's turn the highlight on and off to check the selection. It looks good to me. But in case the selection is not perfect, you can use the hue, saturation and the luminance sliders over here to improve your selection. Just play around with them until you are happy with the result. And then here on the right, we also have some finessing tools and I usually only blur my selection a bit. And then I denoise it over here and that's it. Okay. So let's turn the highlight off and now I want to take some of that vibrancy from the sky as I've mentioned and again there's a few tools we can use. So first we can for example go to the primaries and then we can simply use the saturation slider over here like this and this is before and after and let's reset it and I can also use the gamma wheel responsible for the midtones and we can push it towards red, like this. And the result is also nice. The sky looks way more natural like this. Now I will show you one of the biggest weapons you can use when performing the secondary color correction. And I'm talking about using power windows. And I've already created a node here and I've labeled it. So let's go straight to the power windows. And here we have different shapes of the power windows to choose from but i usually go for the ellipse so i'll grab it and i'll place it over my subject you can experiment with the size of your ellipse and so on and then i will just soften my ellipse like this we can also use the softness slider over here And now let's go for example to curves and let's push the white curve somewhere in the midtones down a bit. And look what happened. This way we've darkened our subject and it's not what we wanted. We wanted to darken the shot outside the ellipse. So now the only thing we need to do is to reverse our mask over here. And look what we've got. This is a very common trick we use to bring more attention to the main subject. And this is before and after. Thank you so much for watching my videos, guys. I hope that you like them. If you do, hit subscribe and don't forget to leave a comment below. See you soon.